welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to be talking about cleanup crews. Now, if you are new to the saltwater aquarium world, you might not know what a cleanup crew is. If you've been around the saltwater community for a while, you definitely know what a cleanup crew is. Pretty much what a cleanup crew is, is it is a set of animals that you put in your tank to help clean up the tank after it's cycled. So what I mean by that is usually once your tank is completely cycled, it gets what's called the new tank uglies. So like diatoms, algae blooms, etc, etc. And the whole purpose of the cleanup crew is to do just that. Clean up all that stuff that's growing in your tank. And then of course, they're going to be in there for as long as you have the tank running. So they will continue to keep the tank clean for you. Because essentially when you're making a saltwater tank, you're making kind of your own little biome. So you want to put things in there to help that biome run smoothly and correctly. And it actually takes a little bit of the work away from you. So when should you get your cleanup crew? Like I said, you want to put your cleanup crew in after you know that your tank has fully cycled. Now the reason you don't want to put them in there before the tank is cycled is because, like fish, ammonia can kill invertebrates, which are typically what make up cleanup crews. So once your tank is cycled, you see those diatoms starting to bloom, that's when you want to purchase your cleanup crew and put it into your tank. Now, like I said before, diatoms are part of new tank syndrome. So what diatoms are is they are essentially a brown algae that will start to grow in your tank once it's cycled due to the nutrients and such that are in the water. And it's all part of cycling a tank. So it's nothing to be worried about when it starts to pop up in a new tank. So the majority of what makes up a cleanup crew is typically snails and crabs. And I'll kind of go over the typical snails and crabs that you would find in a cleanup crew. So we'll go over some snails that you would typically find in a cleanup crew first. So the most common snails that you're going to find are cerith snails, turbo snails, trochus snails, astri snails, nerites, and nesaria snails. Now there are different kinds of those type of snails. So like there's Florida cerithes, dwarf cerithes, there's just like regular cerithes. Like for turbo snails, I know that there are different kinds. There's margarita turbo snails, regular turbo snails. And then like astria, I know there's like ninja star astria snails. So within those group of snails, they can be broken up into their own separate little groups, if that makes sense. So pretty much all of those snails that I just talked about, aside from the Nasaria snails, they're going to clean your glass and your rock of things like algae and detritus. The problem with these snails that typically clean your glass and your rock is that if they fall off the glass or rock and land on their back, they can't right themselves back up. The main culprits of this would be the Astria snails. I've seen that actually happen firsthand. I used to have Astria snails in my old tank and I would be constantly flipping them back over because for whatever reason, they would let go of the glass and land on the sand upside down and then could never right themselves back up. Now, I'm not sure if trochus snails can right themselves back up, but I do know that nerites are able to just because of the way that their shell is shaped. So those are always a good choice if you don't want to have to worry about righting your snails if they fall on their back. And believe me, they will. So as I said, all of those except for the Nasseri snails are typically your glass and rock cleaners. Now, Nasseri snails are also known as zombie snails. They actually live in your sand bed. They bury themselves. They have like a little snorkel that sticks up out of the sand. And what that does is it kind of senses to them like when food and such is coming by or is placed into the tank. These are really good to have in your tank because they'll actually help to turn over your sand bed by having them in the sand bed. Because like I said, they tend to bury themselves in the sand and then like if you feed the tank or they decide to come out at night, they'll turn over your sand bed since they're on burying themselves from the sand. They're usually pretty good about staying right side up. I'm not sure if they can right themselves or not. I've never really had one that's flipped on its back and I feel like if it did, they're pretty nimble enough that I think they'd be able to flip themselves back over. 
Now those snails are what you would typically find in your beginning cleanup crew. You can of course expand on your cleanup crew as your tank matures, so you can throw in other snails such as different kind of conch snails, tiger conch, fighting conch, and the conch snails are much like the Nasarius snails. They live in the sand and they tend to bury themselves and they're good at eating all the junk that piles up on the sand as well as keeping it turned over when they unbury themselves to get up to feed. I have a conch in my 68 gallon tank and he is one of my favorites. I actually had one before my tank crashed and I really enjoyed him too. They have like their mouth is kind of like an elephant trunk, so they stick out their little mouth and they look for stuff. I'll throw in a video here of him eating some of the junk that's on my sand in the 68 gallon tank. snail to have. I would recommend that you don't put them in a brand new tank. You want a tank that's a little bit more established to have a snail like that. Now of course everybody's going to have their favorites and they're not favorites when it comes to different things for your tank. They all kind of have their pros and cons so I would do research before you decide what you want to put in your tank. A lot of people don't like turbo snails because they get really big. I'll pop in a picture of my humongous turbo snail that I have. Now I can tolerate him right now because I really don't have that much in my tank as far as coral goes, but they're pretty destructive in that they're kind of like bulldozers when they move around a tank. So if you don't have your stuff glued or epoxyed down, they're going to knock it over. That's just the way that that's going to work as they get bigger. Now typically they start off fairly small, but like I said, there's some different kinds that can get to be fairly large, like my big one that I have. There's also a lot of people who choose not to have nerite snails, and the reason for that is that nerites are actually a tidal snail, so they're used to the tide going out and them being above water. So they're kind of known for being escape artists if you don't have a lid or some kind of mesh or something over the top of your tank. They'll climb right out the side and people will find them on the floor and everything else because they don't necessarily have to be in the water. However, they can't live out of the water forever, so if they're hanging out on your floor, there's a good chance they're gonna dry up and die. Which nobody wants to find dead snails in their house. And that's why some people don't like nerites. I do like them just because I don't have to worry about writing them back, but they can be escape artists for some who don't have a lid on their tank. Now the next common thing that you're gonna find in a basic cleanup crew when you first start a tank are crabs. Hermit crabs, mainly. There are different types of crabs that you can add and I'll get into that in just a second. There's actually some people who choose not to put crabs into their cleanup crew and they have good reason for that. Some hermit crabs can be very feisty, so shall we say. So they can compete with each other for their shells at their end of their hermit crabs or they actually can kill snails in order to take their shell to make it their home and i have seen some of my hermit crabs do that there are various types of hermit crabs which i'll get into in just a second and some tend to be a little bit more vicious i guess you could say than others when it comes to trying to find their new hermit house but then there's also some that are typically a little bit more docile. So different types of hermit crabs that most people have in their tank would consist of red legs or scarlet hermit crabs, blue leg hermit crabs, jade hermit crabs, and then there's striped legged hermit crabs. Now personally in my tank, I have red legs, I have blue legs, and I actually have some striped legs. These striped legged hermit crabs, they get very big fairly quickly. I have a big one who I have tossed in my sump and that's where he lives because he tries to kill my snails to get their shells and he's just overall destructive because he's so big. I didn't re quite realize that when I got my striped leg hermit crabs because if I had known I would have never gotten them but I'm not really the type of person that just like purposely like toss them in the trash or something when they're still alive. That's not the type of person I am. 
He's living happily in my sump. He picks the junk out of like my Kato algae and stuff that's in there. So he's living his best life in the sump. And that's where he'll continue to live out his days because he's just too destructive to be in my display tank. A lot of people say that scarlets or blue legs are a little bit more docile because they are on the tinier side. I've never had a problem with either kind of those. I like the blue legs because, well, they're pretty. Their legs are blue, so that's kind of self-explanatory. Now, there are fancier hermit crabs that you can put into a tank, and that would be something like your Halloween hermit crab or your electric blue leg hermit crab. I have a Halloween hermit crab. His name is Lurch. I have had him since I first set up my BioCube, which was about three years ago. So he's been through BioCube to drop-off tank. When my drop-off tank had its issue, he went into the 20 gallon to surviving the hurricane crash. He's a pretty hardy crab. Some people have found that Halloween hermit crabs are a little bit on the destructive side. Mine hasn't been. He's a pretty chill guy. Lost my train of thought because my battery died. Anyway, I was talking about my Halloween hermit crab. Some people say that Halloween hermit crabs eat cyano. I don't know that that's necessarily true. Mine definitely picks at algae and stuff that's in my tank, which actually my drop-off tank kind of looks like a disaster right now, which is why I haven't had it in the background of my videos. I'm working on that. I can't really tell if what I have in here is dino or diatoms. So I'm working on cleaning up that tank, and once I get that better, maybe I'll do a video on that. But anyway, my Halloween hermit crab, like I said, he's been through a lot, so he hangs out. Halloween hermit crabs live in conch shells, so I don't know that I would necessarily recommend putting a conch in a small tank with a Halloween hermit crab, because there is a chance that the Halloween hermit could try to kill it to take its shell, and nobody wins when that happens. So I do want to get an electric blue leg hermit crab for my bigger tank just because I think they're cool, they're pretty, I like the way their legs look, so they're cute. Now like I said, there are other crabs that can be considered part of a cleanup crew that are not hermit crabs. The one that comes to mind off the top of my head are emerald crabs. Now emerald crabs, they are a mithrax crab that is used to clean up algae and tanks. They're really good at helping to eradicate stuff such as bubble algae. They like to eat it, so if you have a big bubble algae problem in your tank, definitely a good thing to have. They like hair algae. They're good at cleaning that up too. I think that pretty much the only thing they don't like to eat is Briopsis, which most stuff doesn't. So you would have to go a different route to get rid of Briopsis if you have that in your tank. Now, there are other creatures that can be considered part of your cleanup crew too, but I wouldn't really recommend putting them in a brand new tank, and that's things such as a sea hare or an urchin. You want a little bit more of an established tank for anything like that. So what a sea hare is, is it is... He kind of looks like a giant snail without a shell, pretty much. And what they eat is algae. That is what their diet is. So if you don't have algae in your tank, you're not going to want to get a sea hare, obviously, because it'll starve to death and you don't want that to happen. Urchins, a lot of people do have them in their tank. They can serve different purposes for different reasons. They can have their own individual diets, so to speak. I know one specific type of urchin actually eats coralline algae, which is the purple that you would see on your rocks. So. Some people don't like to have urchins in their tank just for that reason, because of their specified diet. That and because they're urchins, they tend to have stuff stick to them, so they'll be like carrying your frags and stuff around your tank. I personally don't have any urchins just for that reason, because it would drive me nuts if they picked stuff up and moved it around the tank. But that's just my own personal opinion. As you can tell, a cleanup crew has a really big purpose when it comes to your tank. And you can see that the running theme here is that each individual creature has its own job, so to speak, on your cleanup crew. It has its own purpose and it carries out its own job within your tank. So they're not just kind of hanging out like some fish do. They actually work and serve a purpose as to why they're in your tank. So they earn their keep. 
So like I said, the big thing when putting anything in your tank really is doing your research on what you're putting in there. So with a cleanup crew, what you want to do is you want to research what you're going to get and you want to know what specifically it's going to help you with or what its specific diet is and whatever personality or characteristics it tends to have in the tank and see if it would be a good fit for you. Like I said, you don't want to put something like a sea hare in a tank that has no algae whatsoever because it'll starve to death. So the creatures that make up cleanup crews, they tend to be a little bit on the cheaper side of things. Don't get me wrong, there are some expensive inverts that you can buy to put in your tank that would be considered part of a cleanup crew, but for the most part, they're fairly inexpensive. And part of the reason for that is, is because they really don't necessarily last. I don't want to say they don't last all that long because they can last for a very long time. But this is something that you're going to have to replenish through the life of your tank because they won't live forever. So now that I've blabbered on about the cleanup crews, you might be wondering, well, where do I get a cleanup crew? A lot of local fish stores will have cleanup crews for sale. Usually they cut you some kind of deal. I know the one that's by my house, which is by no means a great store when it comes to saltwater stuff, but they do have a deal where you can get a cleanup crew. The one that they have is five snails, either turbo or astrea snails, and then you get 10 hermit crabs. They used to do one where you could get all snails, but they stopped doing that. I'm not sure why, but they did, which kind of peed me off because I need a cleanup crew for my 20 gallon drop off tank. Eventually, I think I'm probably gonna go through a different site to get that though, because I, I don't need t 10 hermit crabs strolling around in a 20 gallon tank. So that leads me to my next place to where you can get a cleanup crew. Now my last one I didn't have such great luck with, but it had nothing to do with the site itself or the person selling this stuff had to do with shipping and it was probably my fault because it was very close to Christmas. And the site that I'm talking about is reefcleaners.org. You can either get a custom cleanup crew made from him. What you do is you email him and give him your measurements of your tank and kind of what you're looking for and he can put together a cleanup crew for you. Or he already has pre-made cleanup crews that you can order based on the size of your tank. And he has a certain amount of each snail or crab that you should have in the tank in these pre-made cleanup crews. Now, the good thing about the pre-made cleanup crew is that the shipping is included in it. Now, if you're pretty far from where he is in Florida, I would recommend upping the expedited shipping just because if it takes more than a couple days, you're definitely gonna have some loss of the stuff coming to you. But I've gotten, aside from my cleanup crew for my bio cube, all of my cleanup crews have come from him. And aside from my last one I bought, I haven't really had a problem. And like I said, that's not his fault, that's the post office fault. So don't hold that against him. The, the crews that he makes are really great and they do last. But like I said, if you're pretty far from Florida, I would definitely recommend instead of doing the regular shipping to do expedited shipping. Now he has it set so you can get just cleanup crews with snails, or if you would like hermit crabs, he also makes cleanup crews that include the hermit crabs. Now the ones with the hermit crabs cost a little bit more because obviously you're adding more animals to the cleanup crew. The other thing is, is that he has different things that you can get that would be part of a cleanup crew too, like limpets and stuff like that, different interesting inverts. I want to say the majority of this stuff actually comes from the tidal part of Florida. Like I think he legit actually has like an area where he has all this stuff and it's held intertidally. So they're pretty hardy for that reason too, because let's face it, our ocean isn't the cleanest thing in the world. So definitely recommend reef cleaners. I'll have them linked down below if you want to check them out. And like I said, I'll also probably be buying some more of a cleanup crew for this 20 gallon once I get it a little bit more settled and figure out what's going on to make sure that whatever's in there is not gonna harm any inverts I put in there. It hasn't affected my hermit crab and there are some snails that are still alive in there, so I'm not really too sure. I might just give it a go and see what happens. So if I do, I'll make a video on that. I know some other sites that you can get a cleanup crew for, from 
our live aquaria live aquarius are a little bit more pricey i think you have to spend like 75 dollars to get free shipping or something with their cleanup crew so like i said they can be a little bit more pricier but it is doable and i know there's another site called aquarium depot that also carries cleanup crews now with aquarium depot i've heard some hit or miss things on that so if you decide to go that route i would do it at your own risk i think they after a certain amount they have free shipping too but it's just like regular snail mail or ups or whatever they used to ship so if you're going to go that route i would definitely recommend you upgrade the shipping to overnight because yeah i've heard some nightmares about some stuff coming from aquarium depot so like i said use that at your own risk but that's it for this video guys i hope you learned a lot about cleanup crews if you liked this video please 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 give me a big old thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos like this one in the future i'll see you guys in my next one bye <music>